Hi guys, my name is Dr. Asim and I am here with another teaching video from Plabable. The topic that we are going to learn today is hyperaldosteronism from endocrinology. So let's see who is our first case. So our case of the day is a 44 year old male who presents to his GP with complaints of frequent headaches and tiredness. He is a known hypertensive and is taking enalapril, amlodipine and chlorothalidon. On examination, Blood pressure was 152 over 94 millimeters of mercury, which is elevated. His labs revealed sodium of 144 and potassium of 2.8. So let's dive into our first topic and learn how to approach and treat such cases. Let's get started. Now before we dive into the complexities of hyperaldosteronism, let's brush up a little bit physiology about renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So whenever the blood pressure decreases, the renal perfusion decreases. Once the renal perfusion goes down, the GFR goes down. And it is sensed by the macular densa cells and they cause the release of renin from the juxtaglomerular cells. Now once renin is released, renin converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. And this angiotensin 1 is converted into the angiotensin 2 with the help of ACE enzyme or the angiotensin converting enzyme. Now this angiotensin 2 aids in the release of aldosterone and it also causes vasoconstriction. Now this release of aldosterone particularly helps in the retention of sodium and water in the kidneys and also it aids in the excretion of potassium and hydrogen ions. If you want to classify hyperaldosteronism, we can divide it into primary and secondary. Primary is the one when there is excessive release of aldosterone from the adrenal glands and secondary is the one when there is excessive renin which is pumped into the circulation which causes excessive stimulation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. Now if you want to enlist the causes of primary, by far the most common cause is aldosterone secreting tumor of the zona glomerulosa which is very commonly known as Quan syndrome and comprises more than 80% of the cases of primary hyperaldosteronism. Other conditions like adrenal carcinoma or conditions like bilateral adrenal hyperplasia also result in primary hyperaldosteronism. If we move on to the causes of secondary hyperaldosteronism, so secondary is caused by excessive pumping of renin into the circulation. So drugs like diuretics or conditions like congestive cardiac failure or renal artery stenosis can lead to excessive release of renin into the circulation which further stimulates the RAS mechanism. Moving on to discuss the clinical presentation of patients with hyperaldosteronism. It becomes very easy to remember all the clinical features if we link the features to the function of aldosterone and to the various electrolyte abnormalities which are happening in hyperaldosteronism. Increased sodium and water retention leads to treatment resistant hypertension. Now the patient is on three antihypertensive drugs and still has this hypertension uncontrolled is what we term as treatment resistant hypertension. Now very commonly you will see that the patient that in the exam it is mentioned that the patient has hypertension which is treatment resistant hypertension and when you perform some labs on this patient you find out that this patient also has hypokalemia that is potassium which is normally from 3.5 to 5 millimole per liter is less than 3.5 millimole. Now an important point to notice here is that hypokalemia leads to a number of problems. It causes muscle weakness, it puts the person at an increased risk of arrhythmias and hypokalemia results in decreased reabsorptive capacity of the kidney which results in polyuria. Now the patient also sometimes complains of headache due to hypertension and the patient despite retaining large amount of water due to excessive aldosterone does not develop edema. Now the reason behind this is aldosterone escape mechanism. So in our patient who has presented with treatment resistant hypertension, he is most likely to suffer from hyperaldosteronism or Kohn's syndrome which is the primary hyperaldosteronism. The screening test that we would like to do in this patient is aldosterone to renin ratio. Now in cases of primary hyperaldosteronism where there is excessive release of aldosterone which leads to increased aldosterone levels in the blood, in the plasma, which gives a negative feedback to renin 
and the level of renin is decreased. So in primary hyperaldosteronism, the aldosterone levels are raised and the renin level is decreased. Whereas in cases of secondary hyperaldosteronism, because it is due to increased secretion of renin in the plasma, which is excessively stimulating the renin androgens and aldosterone system, so there is both increase of renin as well as aldosterone. Now there are various confirmatory tests, however they are being used very less in clinical practice, but to enlist a few of them are like fluidrocortisone suppression test or salt loading test. In this in these tests, you give salt to the patient for a few for a couple of weeks, and this increased amount of salt, which is being given exogenously, should decrease the plasma aldosterone level. But despite giving these increased amount of exogenous salt, the plasma aldosterone level remains increased, remains elevated, and this further confirms the diagnosis of hyperaldosteronism. Now you would also like to do tests like CT and MRI or CT adrenal particularly, which is considered the investigation of choice for localizing the tumor, such as adrenal adenoma or adrenal carcinoma. Also, there is one gold standard test for localizing the cause of primary hyperaldosteronism, which is the adrenal venous sampling. The treatment of hyperaldosteronism can be divided into surgical management and medical management. Now the patients who have unilateral adrenal enlargement are candidates for surgery. So we do adrenalectomy in such patients. And the candidates who have bilateral adrenal hyperplasia require medical management, drugs which are aldosterone antagonists like spironolactone and epilirinone. Now spironolactone is a non-selective antagonist of aldosterone receptor, so it also suppresses testosterone receptors and leads to adverse effects like gynecomastia. However, such ad adverse effects are lesser with epilirinone. So this was all about this patient who presented with treatment-resistant hypertension. So I hope we were successful in giving our patient the diagnosis of Kohn's syndrome and in the future, you will never miss this diagnosis. Remember the clincher, hypertension with hypokalemia, and screening tests like aldosterone to renin ratio. Also, remember the different treatment modalities from surgery to medical management, depending upon the cause. This was all about hyperaldosteronism. Thanks for watching.